The 3D printer community and marketplace are constantly evolving, from a dramatic reduction in price to existing products to brand new products coming online all the time. For many users, a 3D printer is simply an addition to their existing digital fabrication shop, where for others, it could be their first ever foray into desktop digital fabrication. Having an easy and reliable way to remove parts from your print bed is essential to keeping your 3D printer approachable. Constantly chiseling away at your brand new prints is just a recipe for disaster because you're either going to damage your prints or slice your hand. The best thing to do is wait for your print bed to cool back down so that you don't warp the brand new thing you've just printed and take a thin tool like a spatula, scraper, or putty knife as it's really easy to get under the edge of your print. You can slowly work your way around the part until it pops off the bed and you're good to go. The only last thing to pay attention to is keeping anything else important out of the way of their spatula in case you should slip. Named for the fact that they're able to create flush cuts up against any surface, there are a lot of exciting uses for this tool in desktop digital fabrication. Flush cutters are great for trimming your filament into a fine point before loading it into your extruder. You can also use them for removing fine support structure from your brand new 3D print and also for removing any blobs or impurities that may exist on problem areas of your 3D prints. Some 3D printer filaments like PETG or nylon can get really stringy if they're wet and leave a burnt residue all over your hot end and nozzle. Use a brass wire brush to clean this off quickly and easily before it drips and mars your 3D prints. Using a steel wire brush is an option only if you have a hardened steel nozzle, as the steel wire will scratch a softer brass nozzle. While flush cutters are great for removing large pieces of support material, a needle file is capable of getting into tiny spaces of your 3D print and precisely removing any blemishes that may be hiding in there. From brim artifacts to retraction blobs, a needle file is an awesome tool. If you're printing just a little bit too close to the bed, you'll likely end up with a squashed first layer. This is referred to as elephant's foot. Additionally, if you're using a brim for enhanced bed adhesion, you could end up with a really sharp edge around the bottom of your 3D prints. Either of these issues are easily fixed with a deburring tool. With gentle pressure, run the tool around the bottom edge of your 3D print to remove any unwanted material. Just be careful not to apply too much pressure, otherwise you could remove more than intended. Sometimes, even if you do everything right, you can end up with a clogged nozzle. There are ways you can try to clear it, such as cold poles or atomic poles, as we've described in a previous troubleshooting video. However, even using these methods, you might still just need a little bit of extra help to clear your nozzle. These small needles are the perfect size to fit into a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, allowing you to break up any material that's clogged up in there and enable your nozzle to extrude cleanly again. When designing something using CAD, it's very important to have a tangible reference for just how large the object you're creating is. For example, a half millimeter chamfer may look significant on your model, but in reality, that effect is gonna to be too small to notice. Additionally, if you're designing something that needs to fit together with a part that you already have, it's very important to be able to measure that part so that that way, when you're finished printing, everything fits together perfectly. There are three main functions of any set of digital calipers. First, you can use this section here to measure the outside dimensions of your feature. You can use the back side of the tool to measure the inside dimensions of a feature. And you can also use the base of the tool to measure the depth of a feature. All calipers are gonna have the ability to display your measurements in either inches or millimeters and have a re-zeroing function which enables easy incremental measuring. Anytime you're working with 3D printing, it's useful to have different types of glue close at hand. A regular glue stick is a great adhesive for a glass build surface, while super glue is really useful for repairing broken parts, combining multiple prints to make bigger pieces, and also could be used as a thread locker for metal bolts and screws. There are different super glues available, all in varying viscosities, and they all excel in different situations. For example, a thin, low viscosity glue is really useful for seeping into fine cracks, whereas a thicker, higher viscosity glue is really good for gap filling. No matter what kind of super glue you're using, a great thing to have on hand is an InstaSet spray because this allows you to cure your super glue in place instantly. 
Whether you're putting together a 3D printed assembly or simply doing a little machine maintenance, metric socket head cap screws are plentiful. Personally, I find a hex head screwdriver is perfect for about 90% of the screws that I encounter, but sometimes there's a screw around a tight corner or simply in a spot where you can't fit a full size screwdriver. In those situations, a hex key wrench like this is perfect. You can use the short end to break the screw free and then the long end with the ball to unscrew it easily. As with any screw, be careful that you don't cam out of the screw and strip it because the smaller the screw is, the greater the chance that the tolerance of that screw will allow it to strip easily. The hobby knife is a great tool that's gonna make your post-processing life a lot easier. I love using this tool to remove the majority of any imperfections on the surface of a 3D print and then following up with the needle file to smooth everything out. It's also really handy after you've just applied fresh painters or capped on tape to your build surface because you can go around and clean up all your edges so everything's nice and clean. Specifically, the hobby knife that's included in the Matter Hacker's premium 3D printing toolkit is really useful because it includes a wide variety of shaped blades, which makes this particular hobby knife useful in a wide variety of situations. I use tools like these to support my 3D printing experience. Some of them every day, but others more sparingly. Either way, I'm very happy to have every tool I need on hand when I need it. If you're looking to start your own tool set, we've curated and compiled tools like these together into the Matter Hacker's essential and premium 3D printing toolkits. To learn more and to order yours today, go to matterhackers.com. Hey there. Thank you for checking out that video on the top 10 tools for desktop digital manufacturing. If there's any tools that you're using on a regular basis that we may have missed, feel free to let us know. And to stay up to date on the latest digital fabrication content for Matter Hackers, click subscribe. See you in the next one.